So how did you enjoy your, your first series as, as test coach and what was the most fun part of it? Yeah, uh, winning is always fun. Um, but yes, I did enjoy it. It was uh, great being able to see how guys react, how guys respond, and uh, the little bit of growth that I felt has happened already. So that was really um, rewarding uh, on, from a cricket point of view, and then also just to see smiles on people's faces and a happy change room. I think that's the, the real fun part for me. Yeah, yesterday, Tim, spoke about feeling really backed by you and perhaps not having felt that for some time, and now you're speaking about smiles on faces. Can you describe the, the state of mind when you, when you took over and what changed and what did you have to do to get them to have fun? Yeah, so look, it's no secret where the side comes, where the side has come from. Uh, Australia was really dark, I think. Um, and then also we had to deal with, and I say we because we spoke honestly and candidly about Dean's uh, no longer being the captain. Um, and I felt that's, that's the only way one, one moves on, you know, when you, when you do speak openly and candidly and honestly. And um, I think Dean also appreciated that. And then obviously for, for Temba to step up the way he has, we've also got some key guys in that uh, change room that uh, perform leadership roles without being at the forefront of, of team conversations and that. So, yeah, um, I really think that the fundamentals and the, and the, and the cornerstones are there for, for this team to grow from a culture point of view. Dean? Sure, you're speaking uh, about Timber. Um, you've probably seen a lot of great innings here at the Wanderers. Um, I think it's easy to forget now, having won my 284 runs, what the situation was, say, at lunchtime yesterday. Um, just how, how do you rate that knock by Timber and, and how delighted are you for him coming off a pair which was discussed and obviously he's always under, under a lot of pressure. Yeah, he's, he's always under a lot of pressure um, for no good reason sometimes. But I think yesterday's knock was monumental in, in so many respects. The, the, the series was on a knife edge, the West Indies as they have done throughout the series, seem to find a way of clawing themselves back into the match. We, on the other hand, other hand <laughs> often found ways of allowing them back in the game. Um, so when you walked in yesterday and eight for two and then a couple more wickets fell, it was really um, someone need to stand up and move the series and, and, and the, 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 the momentum of the game in our favour and, and ultimately the series as well. And, it was Temba. Um, it's a language we, we, we use about um, playing match-defining innings and spells with the ball. And that was both match and series-defining. Um, I think every single body inside there is, is like so thrilled for him. Um, he wasn't uh, a coach that wasn't happy. And, and, and I think I, I have to commend Mackie for the work that he's put in as well and all the other coaching staff. But yeah, that was that was a hell of a knock yesterday um, against, I must admit, a really skilled bowling unit. I think some people make light of this West Indies side, but they are a really skilled bowling unit, especially their quicks. They've got obviously not as, not all the quicks that they had in, in years gone by, but when you look at J uh, Holder and um, Kimar Roach, even Myers, like they're highly skilled bowlers. So that was a technically a, a fantastic knock. And then also, obviously, in terms of uh, defining the series, uh, massive. Cool. We're going to go Talbot, Hines, and Cardi. Shukri, we saw the way that uh, Bjorn Mulder reacted to Tempo reaching his hundred yesterday, um, and it sort of gave certainly, I think, us an inkling of uh, the, the regard that Tempo is held in the dressing room. Um, yeah, it's, it must be a wonderfully good and important thing for a, for a captain who's new in the job to put up a ball. Like that in the second yeah, thankfully the cameras weren't on the on the on the coaches' room because there'd have been like a few other wild scenes they'd have picked up. Um, but yeah, look, Timba's held in, in such high esteem, and, and even some of the the comments in our in our post day review, um, guys stood up and and lauded him for um, where he's come from, all the um, sticky gets unnecessarily so, um, and for him to come out and, and play like that and. Having just assumed the mantle of, of captain as well, that speaks volumes for the character of, of the person and the ownership that he's taken of, of the side together with some of the other leaders in the group. If, if I could just quickly follow up, yeah, you're only as good as 
your last game or your next game. So how does he, how does he keep that gravitas? I mean, even as a team, you know, do you want to bottle this feeling and take it with you? Well, we've, nine, we've got a <laughs> ninth month period to bottle it. Hopefully it doesn't expire before then. Um, but yeah, look, it's, it's great. I mean, we're not going to talk about a few test matches we play. It's really for, for us to, like I said the other day, find novel ways of, of, of keeping um, the growth going, especially with some of our younger players. But I think Temba and the rest of the guys will remember both that knock, that feeling, the way we uh, were... Today, I thought we were very clinical today in terms of, of, of how we went about our business. And um, yeah, hopefully when we reappear in, in a few months time from our, our, our hibernation, we can continue that. Shrips, I suppose I asked this question partly because the quote sticks in my head, but um, are you happy you unleashed Gerald could see in this series? <laughs> um, just particularly in the context of um, this morning, you know, we've seen his skill on show throughout the series, but Today showed like spirit, you know, in, in recovering from a chastening start, you know, even though it was a bit gay abandoned and the guys batted with, but, you know, to come back, you know, from conceding almost eight and over to taking three for 77, just, yeah, are you happy? Yeah, I'm thrilled. I always knew that we, at some stage, we, we had to, let's keep coining that phrase, unleash, uh, Gerald. Um, and, but also just the, the, the way it, it took on the mantle of, of being the leading quick with KG, uh, he was... At Centurion, he bowled behind KG and Anna and, and, and Marco, so it was probably an easier role. Um, but the way he stepped up, yeah. And, and if you chat to him after the game, he was like really disappointed in, in his performance. He felt he was better than that. And look, uh, <laughs> if that's how a young man's going to react, then I think we're onto something good there. Holly? Uh, sure, so like you mentioned, it's going to obviously be a long period now. You guys have you know, no test cricket, but the guys that have now got the momentum, like for example, Tony Dezuzzi. Um, how are you going to help them keep that momentum until India? Are, are you planning on sending them maybe to the SA tours, etc.? That was not their plan. Yeah, well, hopefully we will we'll get confirmation of, of that pretty soon. Um, and then obviously guys like Tony and, and maybe one or two others, um, if, if and when those tours happen, they'll definitely be on, that, on those tours. Um, hopefully they'll get a spell in the UK as well. And like I said, because we find ourselves in, in, in such a unique situation, we've, we've got to come up with some novel ways of of ensuring that the guys get better and get accustomed to a pressured environment. So we're going to have to put our thinking caps on. I'll take a couple of days off uh, and post a bra or two. I'll, I'll put that thinking cap on and um, make sure that we, we get stuck in properly in the winter. So, yeah. Shooks, uh, you know, the one day fans like, you know, in charge of that, but you, you've gone well with the, the boys in green and now the boys in white team. Can you miss it not being with the boys and do you have any influence on Rob? And Okay, I think, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a sounding board for Rob. Um, I mean, you would have seen Rob in and out the change room there throughout the, the, the last couple of days, and, and we've got a, a great relationship like that. He, he relies a little bit on my experience. Um, I mean, we're not going to say old, so... Um, and, yeah, so there's a constant change of ideas. Whether I miss it, mm, no, I've got to say no, because it's not my gig. Um, but it'll be great to watch that team grow as well because I think we've got the makings of a really good one inside there. And just to follow up, uh, from the outset it was about positive intent and trying to put positive brand of cricket. How far do you think, despite the series, how far are you, how close are you to playing the brand of cricket that you want to play? On the bowling front, I think we, we achieved a lot. Um, playing our four quicks at Centurion and the way they went about their business. Um, yeah, it was always a bit of a um, talking point with, with, with playing the two spinners. And, and I must add, the one downside today is, is Keshav's injury. Um, and I thought, we always felt they were going to come into their own in the, last, in the last inning. So from a bowling front, great. Look, from a batting side, there's a lot of, um, and, and, and I think I need to make this point. Um, we don't have the Graham Smiths and the Hashim Amlas and the A.B. de Villiers and the Jacques Callises in this unit. So we've got to find different ways of skinning this cat, you know. Um, and it's great that we've got two centurions in this series. Uh, we passed 300 a, a few times, uh, which hasn't happened in the recent past. And like I say, against a skilled bowling unit like the, the West Indies, conditions probably didn't allow, and then also our inexperience. But the growth is there. The, 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 um, I think once we, we settle as well, because as, as players, they also... It, 
to expect them to go out and do a, a, a things a certain way with the they're not being sure what what's coming next you know because we changed the team a couple of times so they always felt that maybe the spotlight was was on them and, and they were under the microscope but i'm happy with the growth i'm happy that those boxes that have been ticked like i spoke about milestones it's still a big thing for us and hopefully in a couple of months time yeah we'll see more growth Without a shadow of a doubt, I can say categorically and emphatically that the boys want to play test cricket, every single one of them. And I think we've just got to be very smart in the way we, we do things. We had our, our meetings with all these players prior to the contract list being announced. And it's come out, every single one of them, is, they want to play more test cricket and, they, and they're committing themselves to playing test cricket. And then obviously we've just got to allow them and manage them properly through all the leagues, make sure. And then, and that's why when players get rested, um, a bit like it was done in this test match and in years gone by, I think we, we rested super fast bowlers then already to, to ensure longevity. So, um, yeah, we've, uh, we've got to take all of those things into account to ensure that the players and their well-being is, at, is uppermost. Um, no, I'm not. And that, you might be saying, well, based on what do you give an answer like that? Um, I think I'm a lot wiser now than I was a couple of weeks ago in terms of how we want to go forward and whom we want to go forward with. Um, we also realize that there's work that needs to be done and I think we're going to have some, some really good people to work with these guys. So come our next test series, um, we'll find a stable unit, we'll find a unit that um, security is, is probably not a word that one uses often, but we will create an environment where they know that they've been given opportunity, opportunities to thrive. And um, yes, I'm very comfortable where we're at at the minute. Really comfortable. Can you talk? Uh, sure. <coughs> Just talk us through the happiness that you have with the spirits and also the slight, the um, uncle has slight concern, but the real concern of the shots injury. So I didn't hear the, the full question, can you um, say? Just talk us to the happiness that you, that, that you saw from the spinners' performance, especially in the second innings and uh, the concern with uh, Keshav's injury. Um, let's deal with the second one first. Yeah, Keshav injury was probably the one downside to today. It was, um, look, the, he's undergone a, an MRI scan. We're obviously waiting the, uh, the findings of that, but it doesn't look good at first glance. Um, so we'll just have to wait for that. Um, I thought it would, it would spin more, um, but we soon realized that um, it was a new ball wicket. It was a new ball for both the spinners and the quicks, because when that ball got softer, very little happened. So it was always the plan that in the second dig we were going to give Simon the new ball and attack with, with uh, KG and, and Gerald for a short burst on the, on the, from the one end and then Keshav to follow. So um, yeah, and, and those are, I mean, some of the nuances that you've got to pick up as, as the game unfolds and you've got to be alert to that, the conditions change, but it was definitely a new ball wicket. Um, and so when the conditions were in their favor with the new ball and the, and the wicket, uh, our spinners performed brilliantly. You saw uh, uh, both Simon and Kesh operate just before lunch. So I'm really happy with, with where that is, but there's always room for, for growth as well in both the players themselves and the spin pool as a unit. Happy day.